So right now it's 2.11 in the afternoon. Uh-huh. Okay. Is it called Hawaii, Hawaii, Hawaii Standard Josh? Time? Yeah, sorry. I think it's called this. Uh, what is it called, Josh? Hawaiian Standard Time. Hawaii Standard Time versus Pacific Standard Time would be like California, Nevada. Right. Never changes. With, and then uh, Timothy Mountain Standard Time. Right out. Right. Anybody oh. in Central Standard Time? Okay, and then the rest are. There's some, most people I think are in Pacific time, but I'm, I'm Drum and I are in Eastern time. So anyway, we are online and uh, I'm Skip Conover and uh, I'm pleased to introduce you to Tim Holmes, who's my partner on the Wisdom Path. And he's going to introduce this evening with Colleen Kiber and Tim. So go ahead, Tim. All right. Well, I think most of you know the arrangement that we put together, which is we started doing this in the fall um, just to try to take the temperature of the kind of the collective unconscious and to get a sense of how that changes over the course of, of the election and the end of the year. Um, and it feels to me like we've, um, we've been through an awful lot this past year and even the last, um, since the beginning of the year, this last month has felt like about a year's worth of history with all the events we've, we've experienced. <laughs> yes. I haven't talked to anybody who hasn't felt a, a great sense of relief on inauguration day. And for me, I was pretty surprised that I cried throughout the inauguration just kind of astonished at how deeply I love my country and how long it's been since I've felt that way. Colleen reminded us of this meaningful synchronicity that some of us experienced on the 6th of January when we were doing our Zoom meeting in Skip's advanced reading group on Jung. And Skip's wife, Deb, came in and handed him a note that read that the Capitol had been breached. And Colleen points out that this is a, a moment of real synchronicity, where it's, it, it's like the feminine messenger comes in giving the, the Jungian community a warning that we are about to be called to respond to a calling really unique in our lifetimes. So on that day, on the 6th of January, the, the Christian calendar uh, calls epiphany. And in many ways, this event marks a timely epiphany for not only the US, but the whole world. And what we witnessed was the emergence out of the darkness of our collective shadow. For many of us, the inauguration represented a, the awakening from a terrible nightmare, but the shadow is not merely an idea. It's an authentic part of our psychological makeup. It's an awakened human species that makes that realization and and really calls it, calls the shadow its own. There's a great temptation, I think, to conflate the shadow with the figure of Trump. And now that Trump has vanished from the White House, we, it's, the temptation is to feel that we've defeated the shadow, but that's definitely not the case. It's our responsibility to not only recognize that, but as an awakened being to bring that vision out before the people. There's a, my favorite theologian, Walter Brueggemann reminds us that we are now in much the same position as the Old Testament prophet Jeremiah was in the sixth century BC. His people, the Israelites had become overcome and were taken into exile into Babylon. And there, after three generations of living in this strange land, they kind of become used to it. They, they'd intermarried and started businesses. They'd established themselves and grown pretty comfortable. And it was up to Jeremiah with a poetic voice to disrupt their complacency, to remind them that they are in exile and to fill their hearts with a longing to return home. And I feel like this is the position that we artists are in today. 
our people have become exiled before us. And we are left with two, I think, critical responsibilities. One is to shine light on the shadow and keep identifying it as it changes and tries to scurry back into the darkness. And the other is to sing the song of home so that the brothers and sisters around us never forget where it is that we truly belong. It seems that the people are in need of both an awareness of the darkness and, a, and an awareness of the direction toward the light. And we have a special role to be attentive to the images that bubble up from inside us and to share them as we can. And most importantly, to take those images seriously, because it's not a stretch to say that really the survival of the species depends upon that. So we are all kind of gathered here for that purpose, to try to, to pay attention to those images as they come out of the, of the unconscious, to share them with each other, and then to try to, um, to dialogue with each other, to find out what the meaning, what the, um, what the connections are between the visions that we see. So that's kind of my understanding of, of what we're gathered here to do. Uh, Colleen, do you want to add to that? Thank you. You always, <laughs> you always uh, put it so well, Tim. That well, stretch, you. I think, between what's going on with the individual and what's going on with the nation and what's going on with the planet is a huge stretch. Um, and even for those of us that want to make the stretch, <laughs> it's a huge stretch. And it sure means a lot to have a community of people that care about that, care about that connection. That's what's going on with the planet, what's going on with the nation and what's going on with me are very connected. And of course, the reality of the collective unconscious. And I've noticed how the media has switched from uh, so much attention to the darkness while it was exciting. And now so much attention to the organization that's going on in Washington, DC, thank goodness. But um, there is a collective unconscious that's very powerful. And um, thank you all for helping us feed into that collective unconscious and for acting on it as well. So with that, Skip, yes, let's see what's going on. Okay, um, so I'm going to uh, be uh, bringing along the, the PowerPoint that I've created and uh, I'll first uh, share with you the tease that I sent out to everyone, which is yeah uh, is that is that everybody's seeing that powerpoint now <laughs> yes it's okay so beautiful. that was the tease <laughs> yes. which was my doodle before january 6th and yeah. so um it, it got a bit darker after that so anyway this is uh, the mark of the self january 30th and um before we get into it in great detail um Colleen, why don't you uh, explain what we're doing in the open studio? Well, in February, February and March. Yeah, February and March. Um, Skip and Tim have agreed to let me do an in-studio class uh, because I think it's so important that we, you know, here we're sharing. Next, we're going to do together. And so on February 9th and 23rd at 4 o'clock in the afternoon again, um, I'll do a hands-on studio class where you'll be working along. We'll all be working along together at the same time. And the subject is participating in the mystique of the psyche. And this is a quick picture of the psyche. But I'm going to be specializing on us looking at the psyche from the standpoint of Carl Jung, the, um, the conscious the personal unconscious, the collective unconscious, and then within that collective unconscious, uh, there is the creative drive, which we're all uh, manifesting and demonstrating today. 
Um, but there are other things in that collective unconscious, like the masculine and the feminine and the anima and the animus. Those are four different things. They're not all the same. And then uh, what is so very, very important in this day and age is the shadow, the national shadow and the personal shadow and the shadow of the planet. So um, that's what we're going to be focusing on. Uh, those will be hour and a half long classes and we'll be working. So thank you, Skip. Right, okay. Um, and also uh, I will put on the chat here, let me just stop this for just a second so that I can put on the chat. This is the link uh, for registering so that you get notified. Uh, this is for our panelists on Zoom. Um, and uh, I've already put it on to the YouTube uh, live stream, so you all um, have that. Okay, so we're going on now. Um, and so the first up tonight is Lindsay Johnson. Uh, uh, Lindsay, are you there? Well, I'm here, but I'm masquerading as Hannah Dalby um, because okay. my link wouldn't didn't work, and so she sent me her link, and then I don't know if she's back on. She's having terrible trouble with her connection. So, um, but uh, this I this was the day of um, January sixth uh, of the the break in. And I just noticed that Judy Woodruff, who's the anchor for PBS, we, she had on this dress that to me just screamed out Statue of Liberty. Um, and I thought it was really interesting because throughout the day, she was just poised and elegant and strong and grounded, you know, and transparent, you know, she stood for all the positive qualities that, you know, I think of the Statue of Liberty as embodying. And uh, so I just, uh, uh, I wanted to, I just did a quick sketch because it just seemed so dramatic, but it she also a little bit reminded me of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, how yeah. she has her <laughs> necklaces. And there was a, a, an image of Ruth with a crown on, there were several, with a crown on so that she could double for that image as well. But um, I, and I just, I don't I have no idea if Judy Woodruff had any idea of what uh, she was, you know, possibly symbolizing. I just thought it was fascinating. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, and the question is, uh, when she got dressed, did she know that anything was happening? Maybe not. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. yeah. Maybe. But it was perfect, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it was I mean, that, that's one of those synchronicities, you know. Yeah. I love that you captured it, Lindsay. Yeah, oh, it's a beautiful you. image. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, okay so next is uh, Jerome Waddle, and he's with a poem by Sherry Loveler, who's also here this evening, but uh, Jerome. Uh, thank you, Skiff. Uh, on uh, November 22nd, uh, 2020, you did a, a panel discussion with Sherry Loveler, who's here today. And it was called uh, Artist Sherry Leveler on Calligraphy and When Poems Are Not Poems. And during that uh, poetry reading, uh, she showed us her book called On Softer Ground, which is she combines an artwork picture with a poem. And so I got this idea. I said, she asked, somebody asked Sherry if the poem or the art emerged first or they were together, which came first, the chicken or the egg type of thing. And so she said, well, sometimes it's the poetry, sometimes it's the art, sometimes it's both. So I had an idea. I said, well, I got a copy of Sherry's poem book, lovely book, by the way. And so I said, I'll take a blank sheet of paper and see what immediately images would emerge from my unconscious into a painting, just reading her poem in a painting like she did. And I wanted to know, would the painting reflect my personal or collective unconscious? And what would it say about what is happening now in these COVID and political times that we're facing? So here's the first one. And uh, 
So, and thanks to Sherry, she was gracious to grant her permission for me to combine my painting with her poem. So thanks, Sherry. Uh, the first one is called Evening. It's called, and I'll just read it. Feel with evening as the moon enters my veins. The awe at first sight from sliver to full. The stars once hidden by the sun now shine against the darkened sky. Every night this show, every chance I take to feel the evening, every falling star, my own. So what popped up for me was this symbolic eye and the seeing of the transition from evening to reveal the stars. And uh, it was just such a good, what stimulated that was the idea that the stars are hidden behind the screen of the sunlit day. So you don't see the stars until night uh, and the sun mask the uh, stars. Uh, and this kind of resonates with the current state of our collective day-to-day -day affairs. So that was my connection. And it was kind of a metaphor and a reminder, you know, that hidden truths are being obscured because perhaps maybe we have too much light and the seeing eye must, uh, you know, and maybe it's covering the darkness or maybe it's the other way around. And Tim says we talk about shadow. But you could also uh, look, turn this the other way around on its head. And you could say, well, perhaps the light is the shadow and it's covering up our access to our unconscious and covering up the truth. And uh, I also said, uh, you know, so the idea of the eyes, it keeps uh, focused upon both aspects of our human condition. And I, I really love the part in the poem where Sherry said, uh, at night, the individual stars are shining. So anyway, that was my connection with the thing. Uh, Jerome, I'm sorry, I have to stop the share for a moment because okay. I, I just, sure. okay, uh, all right, it's coming back now. I just had to check whether there, someone was arriving that needed to be admitted. Okay, uh, so your next piece is this one. Okay. Yeah, the second painting is uh, Sherry's poem called Great Moments. And uh, this depicts uh, people around the campfire. Uh, and uh, I'll read the poem. Great moments dwell in the grasses and the trees, in the fluttering light that surrounds us. They live in the stories that are shared from one person to another in the deep songs of the soul. They open the door to love, propel us from here to there, make ourselves feel alive. Great moments tap as gently as beating as a beating heart, come and go like whispers in the wind. I had so many great moments to choose from, but these the sharing of the stories in the poem reminded me of groups sitting around a fire sharing stories of their great moments. And even sharing stories is a great moment in and of itself, I thought. And thus the golden clouds that you see reflecting that moment. And it reminded me of the ancient primordial ritual sharing of the old times behind the campfire. And it's a circular Mandela form. It's also a protective crucible or a container. And it conjured up memories of camping trips when I was a kid, uh, family gatherings, uh, Thanksgiving, Christmas that, you know, we, we really missed this time of year. Uh, it also reminded me of uh, even working with transpersonal psychology group workshops where we would share our deepest uh, thing, uh, things about ourselves. Uh, and I also thought uh, in my leadership career and my uh, 
we employed, I employed what's called participatory leadership style, which means we sit around and we share things in the group. It's a different type of leadership. And so those are some really good moments. And uh, even I had an experience of participating in what's called an authentic American indigenous Indian sweat lodge ceremony where you go in and sweat and you sit in a circle and uh, it, you get that feeling and stuff. But I also feel like, well, maybe that's happening here now in this group, thanks to Skip, Colleen, Tim. You're providing the container for us to share our great moments. And so my hope for 2021 is that, you know, we can share what springs forth from our creative side, sitting around in our Zoom circle. And uh, maybe we are participating in what the next step of our evolutionary human movement is, and that's channeling our energy away from egocentric energy that wants to exploit and dominate. And we can bring forth and unite the deepest, most central energies of our consciousness. So thank you, Sherry, for the forum. Thank okay. you, Jerome. Mm. Thank you, Jerome. Yeah, very powerful, Jerome. Beautiful. Okay, uh, Tim, do you have participants up now, so you're able to admit people, are you? Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, okay. All right. So uh, I, I don't have to stop the share. <laughs> but, okay. So next is Kathleen Pools. Hmm. Kathleen. Well, speaking of solution makers, um. This is uh, a watercolor that was Rocky style. We laid the, the I laid the uh, watercolor down and back and I brought a silver pencil to it. And this, um, this woman appeared and I don't have a cursor, do I? You can't see my cursor, right? No. Anyway, it felt to me like she was coming from above and she was just arriving and she had a, um, you can see in her ar outstretched arm, a green orb. And if you remember from last time, I'm, I'm tracking this woman that has this orb and the orb being solutions and being remedies and being possibilities. And um, yeah, and she carries in her arm, it's hard to see it here, but she has a, um, a, a book of knowledge and um, yeah, and she's being received by a person here down in the, in the lower right um, with arms open and willing, willingly. So she's, um, she's bringing in solutions for, for where we're at at this point. I, I did this piece probably around, it came through around the 13th, 14th, 15th, right in there. So it was before the inauguration. Beautiful. Yes. Yeah, the colors are great. Yeah. Yeah. Feminine. Yeah. The feminine coming. Yeah, the feminine, feminine coming through more and more and more. Solution oriented aided feminine. That's it. Okay, thank you, Kathleen. Oh, thank you, Kath. Thank You're you. welcome. Okay, so next is uh, Jordan Hoggard. Jordan. Hey, everyone. Well, so um, I cried through the inauguration too, and I don't know if I've watched that much television in the last ten years that I watched start to finish. I just I was canceling meeting. I just stayed there, and but something about that serenity, and especially with Amanda Gorman. Um, I don't know if I've felt that much joy inside and in, um, in, in just a public event moved. And it stirred something in me from back in 1988. So on the left here is just the artifactual bleed through 
of my previous hopes and dreams doodle. So what the paint pen part of the coloring uh, came through, which was much more simple than the darkness that was positive on the previous that was depth. But this shattered feeling came over me and then crushed and a sadness. And I remembered back to 1988, I was the second year in college. I was moving towards being vice president of the American Institute of Architecture Students. I was winning awards. Over the summer, I was inv invited to be a voting member on a design review committee for a new fellowship hall at our church. Well, 19-year-old um, doesn't know anything about hubris or out of your depth or too far in. Um, one of the primary competitors would be my boss that I'd worked for since I was 16. So my first mentor, well, the three words conflict of interest also don't typically enter a 19 year old's mind. So imagine the rage and betrayal I saw in his eyes when he walked into the room to present and I'm sitting there in a coat and tie as one of the primary voting members. And at first there was this ecstatic feeling like, oh, here comes my mentor. He's going to do a great job. And then I saw his eyes. Well, short of it is, and of course, I was fired the next Monday because I didn't have a wife and kids and you need to learn this lesson and you can do it now. Well, that firing crushed me. I felt like my architectural career was over before it started. And so in that sense, I kind of felt from January 6th to the inauguration that kind of gig where I sat for an hour each day, I was crushed back then. But I didn't understand my own rage that what I had decided to be an architect, because being a tarot reader and astrologer certainly wasn't a real job to me back then, um, was now just robbed from me. And I started to feel like I was, that was the closest I've ever been to war where my love, my career died in my arms and was literally exploded. Well, what's interesting about this is I love the perspective now because that was under one Saturn Uranus astrological relationship. And then look at the bleed through on the right side. That's the backside of the middle, dark, angry, mean, shadowy rage, betrayal that I felt in terms of me being in a situation that I shouldn't have been. And, and I will say, my parents told me about conflict of interest, but you know, oh, I can do this. And the feather in my cap was that superficial young piece. And so the healing was um, unstabbing myself in the back by, I stayed the course. I had good mentors the next semester when I went back to college, my primary advisor, saw me and immediately went, oh my, oh dear, what, what happened this summer? He could just see that I was just kind of a walking shell. And now though, I look back and what a wonderful experience to have gone through now from the story it tells. And so to me, there's this mix of the current events and the rage you see in some people and the fracture and the being crushed and also the turn side of that of with some perspective, no intensity can be made to do be anything other than a solution that we can all work with together. And so my end gift here to me was the old ha African hunter's proverb of, if you wanna go fast, go alone. That's what I did in the middle. But now on the, on the right side, if you wanna go far, go together. So that's, that was this, this triptych um, of the primary doodle in the middle with the previous artifactual bleed through on the left and then the bleed through from this one behind it on the right. And when I started that architectural degree, um, I started as a triple major, architecture, philosophy, and psychology. My freshman year, I was invited into graduate philosophy and psychology courses. And this to me then felt like the inauguration. There was such a higher octave beginning that had so much potential. Now, personally, the previous doodle crushed uh, by the second year, still trying to 
clamor back after that summer. I had I dropped psychology and philosophy. I couldn't afford 30 page papers with all my studios and architecture. So that was a loss. But what I see then from there, the inauguration had such eternal hope and that golden splendor of Amanda Gorman's dress and Gwen, um, not Gwen Stefani, um, Lady Gaga had the you know, overly large gold dove of peace. And all of those pieces to me were that glimmering eternal splendor of hope. So I look at the top, the left, the, the woman, the sacred feminine, the anima. And I look at the top right, the sacred masculine and the animus that emerge Phoenix style, but connected in this place of this Juno astrological figure. That was my, my breaking the rules of my straight line here was one, two, three, four, five lines, and then everything coming in around it. So that I'm not going to be a psychologist and I'm not going to be teaching philosophy or have a PhD in either, but I take that into my tarot and my astrology and the books that I write. And that's where that has now risen up to live as something else, which I firmly feel in this collective with Biden and Kamala Harris, that um, we have this Phoenix risen amongst us of a group that not only uses complete sentences, but also robust language. And that to me gives me hope for the collective moving forward. And I'm just happy to be participating in that as well. This where we can all share um, personally and collectively how we are experiencing these times. Thank you. Thank you, Jordan. Okay, next is Nancy Pfaff. Is Nancy here? Yes, I'm here. Great. Well, this is uh, inauguration 2021, and I felt a lot of what Jordan has shared too. Um, We've got the opposites of violet and yellow with a white column between them. And during this period when things were so raw, uh, during and after January 6, I had a prayer experience of being uh, in a column that was a profound neutral. It wasn't for the Trump or it wasn't for the Biden. It was simply an energy of wholeness, holding things together. And so there's hope for me in the sense that that, that which uh, life emerges from is constant and always there. And then uh, just to hear a sane man speak in his inauguration speech, it was just like so much fell off my shoulders, so much darkness fell off my shoulders. And I didn't realize how brutalized I'd felt during the previous administration. So there was the joy of the flower, but also the awareness that the shadow is very alive and dangerous in some part. And, um, so I had this, this mi these mixed feelings during the inauguration. And I wondered why I chose the yellow and violet as the two opposites for the unification of the white there. And uh, I realized as Jordan did, the yellow in uh, Amanda Gorman's uh, coat, beautiful yellow coat. Beautiful. Very nice. Okay. So those are the eyes of the shadow down below, Nancy? Yes. Yeah. Well, the, the, the aliveness in the shadow, uh -huh. but the shadow is uh -huh. not. Uh, at rest, so to speak, it's not. It's not it's something to be ignored. There's right. a lot it's of power and life in the shadow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of light, light coming through it that gives it energy. <clears throat> yeah. 
and through the yellow as well. You know, a lot of different shades of hope. Yes. Yeah. Well done. Thank you. Let's Looks see. like a very, very honest picture of where we are. Yeah, <laughs> sort of being plucked <laughs> apart from it. <laughs> I don't know. Um, okay, Sarah Swink, are you here? I am here. Okay, great. <clears throat> so I made this uh, drawing um, as an exercise for a dream group that I'm in back well before the election from uh, a, a, an image that I had in a collage that was about the, the, the collage image was maybe an inch tall. And this is three feet by two feet. And I drew it with my non-dominant hands. <clears throat> and the more I looked at it, the more I saw that myself as the bottom figure and Trump as the top figure. <laughs> and it really bothered me and I, I tried really hard to not see it that way, but you know, the more I looked at it, the, the more I realized that that's what it was because he was doing such scary things. And I, and I was so worried about the election that it was dominating my thoughts. And so um, Skip, you can go to the next one. Okay. Sarah, I do want to comment uh, how it's a little bit like Nancy's when she refers to the feminine being brutalized. You know, that the dance. Yes, I could very much re relate to, to yeah. what Nancy said. Yeah. So this is th then after the uh, sometime, I think after the election and the huge relief of the election, um, I, it may have been then or it may have been uh, at the time of the inaug inauguration when. Um, uh, you know, it was such a, a momentous event and so emotionally, just such a huge relief. I turned the drawing upside down. So now that <laughs> the Trump figure is on the bottom and I'm on the top, but I'm still keeping an eye on him. And, <laughs> um, uh, and then, and now, I mean, I honestly thought, well, almost with the events that have happened since with the, the things that the Republicans are doing right now, that the drawing can be flipped back and forth. <laughs> uh, and it really represents the fear. And I think that, you know, I have a lot of personal fear about it. And I think there's a lot of collective fear about what could be lost here. Uh, so uh, I thought that would be a good thing to share today. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Very Thank good. Thank you. Okay, Sherry. Sherry Lubler. Uh, hi, thanks. And I first want to thank uh, Jerome for that beautiful reading of my poem and, and just taking it into such a beautiful, alive place. So um, it's really a treat for me to, to see you um, going to those places with, with my work. So um, this is last time I, I showed a, another double page spread. This is a little book I've been working on. It's three, in, it's four inches tall, three inches wide each page. So the page spread is uh, six inches wide. And I've been doing this for a year. I've been doing, well, almost a year. I've been doing it since the beginning of uh, Shelter in Place. And so it goes through, you know, all sorts of stuff. And, and this is uh, after January 6th, and I've been able to calm down a little from it, and before the inauguration. And, um, and I'm kind of feeling like I'm retreating, sort of going back into myself and, and finding who I am again after so long with pre-election and, and the election, and then can we get the Georgia senators in there? You know, and it just felt like never ending and just a time to step back and and come together again. And so this is some, uh, actually some drawings of flowers, uh, contour drawings of flowers and um, my asemic writing, just sort of that, that uh, calligraphic kind of mark making that I like to do. Yes. And, um, and I realized it's also, this was done like just a day or two before I wrote a poem that I didn't send in, but I'd like to read it the day before inauguration, when we really didn't know what was going to happen at inauguration uh, in terms of any violence. And so it was sort of like sitting calm again. And, and uh, it's called We Begin Again. We pause in uncertainty today 
while great winds rock us and cracks in the earth's floor ripple through town, houses bounce for a second, then settle and reflect. Our country upheaved waits in hushed silence as fellow Americans show the face of rage bottled for years. The hatred never left them. That was the surprise. We thought they understood we are all equal. We thought they understood that all humans deserve a good life. But the cork has been removed. The kettle's steam escape, escaped. Led by lies and fear, they storm our capital, our foundation. Transitions come, but not without hard work. So we begin again, craving normalcy, decency, family, vision, hope, and of course, very missed hugs. Hmm. So um, I just want to show for a minute, uh, this was my little book page the day uh, after the inauguration and sort of a little more. Just a minute, let me stop to share for a moment so that you can oh, okay. Okay, go ahead. Um, a little more exuberance. Uh, the blue and the red was sort of my subconscious, I think. Uh, maybe the hope of things coming together, although I don't have much hope for it. But anyway, um, but a little more life. Oh, yes. <laughs> so that was my next one. After wow, that. what a switch. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Terrific, sure. I thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Okay, so moving on. Um, Deborah Bowman Stevens, are you here? Debbie, are you here? Okay. Guess not. But this Interesting is, piece. Yeah. Isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. Uh, the feminine again. Uh, reflecting feminine mm -hmm. with a lot of darkness and a lot of cracks yep. in, the, yeah. in the universe. Some light coming through the upper right. Yeah. Very good. But it's still cloudy. Okay. All right. Um, next is Hannah Dalby. Uh, Hannah. Yes. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, yes uh -huh. we can. Okay. So this was definitely in response to the um, January 6th insurrection, <laughs> horrible thing that happened. And there's a lot of light that I still was feeling from all the hope of the inauguration coming up and Biden being the new president and getting Trump out of here. And um, however, there's a lot of tangles in the beginning and the um, kind of going through the mandala and then the blackness, the darkness. So in doing this, I could feel the shattering of the collective and how I was feeling yeah. from that horrible day. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Feels like oh. it's moving so fast. What's that? It feels like it's moving so fast, just spinning. Yes, I know. There was a lot of energy that just kept coming through. Yeah. And um, it really, really said how I felt. Yeah. Yeah, it's very, very dynamic. It sure is. When you say the tangle, you know, that the, the computer, that piece coming right through the middle really. I can relate to that of my mind feeling like that. What is going on? What is going yes. on? Deb yes. can't skip that piece of paper. What's yeah. happening? I can't. <laughs> um, it really says it. When I first, uh, it ended up as a tangle, but when I first started, I wanted it to be a crack through the mandala that Leonard Cohen's crack, that that's what lets the light in. But then yeah. I kept going with it, and it ended up more of a tangle. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, everybody keep this uh, shattered manda mandala in mind, because it came up at my, one of mine as well. So. <laughs> hey, Skip, we got one participant wants to get in, and I can't get her in. 
Okay, uh, let, we'll stop the share momentarily. Let me get her in. Uh, okay. I wanted to say about that is that it actually looks a bit like a COVID molecule, molecule too. Yes. Boy, it yeah. does. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it also, <laughs> Hannah, it also <laughs> looks <laughs> like the world and all the people standing towards yeah. the in all this chaos. Yep. And that split <laughs> in the middle. Yeah. It's a good one to project onto, I think. Yeah. yeah very good. <laughs> then it's like that initial instant of shattering glass from like a bullet hole. I mean, where that first yeah. little, where it all is just light speed exploding outwards. Yeah. 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 Well, it was quite an explosion for the collective to see that the unbelievable happening. It was shocking. Yeah. Yeah. It still is. Yeah. Okay. So your second one is this one. Yeah, I I wanted to calm down after that other piece. And so I played with my watercolors just the other day. And it started out to be a little bit of a rocky piece, but I haven't gone forward um, bringing more of the images out. But I can see kind of some angelic figures I could work with. It, it felt like I was hoping that it shows the light coming through the darkness. So I, this one wanted, I wanted to feel a lot of hope again, and especially after the beauty of the inauguration and the promise that we're on a new path now. So I need to keep working with it, but I, I like doing it and it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Anna. Mm -hmm. uh, next is Louise Wallach. Louise, are you there? Yes. Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Good. Well, um, this was an amazing process. I had never worked in a piece of watercolor. I'd never wet the paper and found the mystery of what happens when you put real goopy paint on wet, uh, good watercolor paper. So I had myself a really wonderful time. And, um, then I found that the colors faded and uh, it ended up being these kind of shapes. The color is kind of bland in the picture, but there's a little bit more life in the figures and uh, the color. Anyhow, it took me many, many, many days of walking by it, not touching it, turning it, finding maybe a bravery to put an outline about something that showed up for me. And a lot of things showed up and they all seem to be parts of something. and there's like no orientation to it, which makes it to me very kind of unusual because you're not oriented to look at it one way. You can look at it another way. So like, there's a lot of like, you know, it's, it's not certain. This is like, it's not certain, but this is what came up for me. Um, and I outlined and on the um, upper right, you see to me was a, um, I called it a woman of blue. And she has a tattoo on her arm and she in my mind she was a warrior uh, of a warrior tribe and she's sitting astride or she's sitting above a um a female moose that's what that was a female moose and i had such an interesting search about what moose what female what do female mooses do and um i learned that they don't defend their territory that they kind of cohabit and they cohabit in harmony so i thought that was an interesting um, vehicle, a vehicle here. And, um, you know, they are collectively, they uh, are protective of their offspring. So that seemed to be uh, some qualities that just after reading about, it, and I said, this sounds right. So here's this uh, woman of blue up above with the uh, tattoo on her arm. And, um, and she is holding a golden child. And that's that figure to her uh, left, if you can see where that is. Yes. Um, yeah. And it, yeah. Yeah. And uh, so this this child is kneeling like in um, in a supplicant manner, uh, and the and the woman is like it's, she, she's behind him. Uh, she seems to be guiding him and directing him forward, and it seems to me that he was carrying the gold. Ah, beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. Well, that's just what showed up. Now, if you'll turn it in the other side, this is this is why it became so interesting to me because after a while some of these things came up and I found that I had a 
a woman with red hair. And uh, that thing that is, uh, is an arm. And it seemed to me that she's armed and she's alarmed. And she's looking at a very jumbled world. And that tattoo is on her arm and it, 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 uh, it energizes her there. Mm. And uh, she's, she's wearing an earring and, and it's, some, it's a totem. I don't know what it is, but what she's doing is looking towards a, um, a small red figure that's seated. She's, it's a silhouette. So it's a kind of a reddish silhouette of a man a red, he's red and ochre color, if you can see that figure that she seems to be looking at. And uh, so it's kind of a silhouette. You see his knees sticking up and his head looking towards her. And so he's a small, fiery figure. Um, he's also sitting in front of open space. It looks blank. It's opaque. It's unknown. And it hasn't been written yet. So that's what he's sitting kind oh. of. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> he was, and then and then showed up um, the gray figure on the left side. The left side is a kind of a back of a head of a man with his shoulder sticking up right there. The shoulders on the right side of the head, if you know if you're looking at it. And he um, he he had his back to the viewer. It, just, it seems to me. And he's looking at that seated man as well, like she is. Um, and, and of course, I don't know what he's thinking because I can't even see his face or anything. And I kept thinking, why am I seeing the back of a head of somebody? What is that about? And um, it somehow it got into my consciousness that, I, that we were seeing him from the side of his amygdala that was showing up, the, the real primitive, the, the real uh primitive part of him that's why we don't see a face and that's what i was thinking too and mm -hmm. then you know then i thought maybe he doesn't want to be revealed and maybe he just doesn't know maybe he doesn't know maybe he's like he doesn't know so he's a shadow maybe he's a shadow he all of the um he has all of the characteristics of a shadow as you describe it yeah he is figured there and so and so everything's floating and there's a lot of white space in this um, this experience for me because you know there's a lot of things that I don't feel feel filled in on. It's it, I feel like I'm on a short tether for feeling hopeful right now. Just a, a short, you know, that. And I kept thinking this three words kept showing up for me, which is transition and reckoning and passages. So that's what happened to me when I did this. And it was very powerful and very stimulating. Great. And a lot of parallels here with some of the other images we've seen, like the light coming forward mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, the tattoo of this kind of coronavirus shape, which is like the shattered mandala mm -hmm. and the earring, which is like the eye shape that Nancy and Jerome used. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm just really resonating with all the, parallels between the different images we see. It's cool. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Louise. That was wonderful. Thanks, Pip. Appreciate that. So uh, Rhea sent in this image, but she asked not to be called upon to speak. And so she asked me to read this uh, short passage, which is uh, deep wisdom is watching and teaching us, the humans, so that at last we may make the divine music and dance the dance of life. And so this is Rhea's piece. Oh, wonderful. Thank you, Rhea. It's, it's really a remarkable piece. I, I like it very much. And I also like the, the cloth that you're showing it on, so. Yes, that's a nice, beautiful piece of red fabric, isn't it? Yeah. This True. this technique that Rhea is using, which is what uh, Louise was using and Kathleen Pools, is something that we'll be working with uh, in our open studio classes. It's a wonderful way to participate with the mystique. It's a very interesting technique. I really like it. 
you know, a lot comes up, as you can tell. Yeah. Okay, so here is Leah Watson. Leah. Another one. Yeah. Right. Skip, could you show the other one first? Uh, sure, I can. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't have it in the right order. Well, that's okay. So this is just the, the, this is the first one that I did and it was uh, definitely the, the Rocky technique and uh, uh, this uh, female feminine person showed up um, and it's, these tend to be a combination for me of collective things and my own personal things like these dancing boots here and um, I, I think there's there's a mystery about the woman. Uh, the feet aren't so much a mystery. The head, this is about new knowledge. Um, and um, there's a transparency about this hidden part of herself, but I like that. Um, and then I, I wasn't finished with this. And I went back to work on it and uh, something happened and a bunch of water got on it and it was, it, it wasn't workable. So then you can go to the next one, Skip. Okay. Um, I, I looked at it and I cut it up into pieces. I took the feet oh. and, I took, and I took the head and I took the globe and I put it on another background I had started and then this dark figure is is from um some collages that i've done in the past and i just kind of put them together and i i feel i i, I feel hopeful i feel very hopeful about the direction that we're going i mean I, I i know it's really important not to lose sight of the shadow and what it's doing personally and collectively but um I'm feeling hopeful about the earth, which perhaps this uh, says um, that uh, the feminine is coming to the rescue of the earth. Um, and and I like the, the, the sort of the, uh, the darkness is prevalent, but there's joy and hope in this to me. So. Beautiful. Um, oh, wonderful, Leah. And she's smiling. That's a nice thing. I think she's smiling under there. Yep. Yep, yeah. I do. And she's showing us something in the light. Beautiful. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Okay. okay. Thank Wonderful. Thank you, Leah. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Next is Burdell. Burdell Spellman. I'm here. I'm here. Um, Yes, I, I did the Rocky technique to just lay down the, the colors of the, the watercolors. I haven't done it before. And um, so it was interesting to look and look and look. And I just, I saw a lot of different things in the, in the page on the paper, a lot of different images. I decided though that I wanted something big I wanted to find um, like a unifying uh, image that would pull it all together and not fragment. So it did come into kind of a face with square eyes and some kind of weird uh, nose and mouth or, and chin. And, uh, but eventually it, it doing it, um, continuing to work with it, it, it fragmented anyway. Um, I into different pieces, the eyes are um, clouded and seeing different fragmented things and uh, the face is fragmented. For me, it was um, a time, I did it around January 26th or so, 24th <clears throat> or 26th. And um, I hadn't had a lot of energy and I, I'm dealing with my own process, my own personal process that involves a lot of grief and a lot of historical grief, um, 
decades old grief that hasn't been processed. And um, it felt really related to that, to my own personal um, work with the grief. And then I thought, well, um, you know, our country hasn't grieved um, all the losses and all the, um, the history that uh, we have a lot of grieving, un, unfinished grief in the country. So I didn't, um, I felt connected in that way. And it feels shadowy and it's not uh, clear and um, there's a lot to be worked through and there's um, dark and light and yeah, now that hints we've... of... Uh, now that we've put all these deaths into numbers, um, we don't have to think about the fact that they're deaths, but there's not, it's, nothing's been properly mourned. Yeah. Hey, Skip, we got another participant wants to get in. Okay. Uh, excuse us for a moment. We will stop the share momentarily while I uh, admit somebody. I want to count. Oh, can you hear me? I want to comment. Yes on uh, your, your piece, Burdell. Um, I think that when you said that you felt connected though to what's going on, I think that that's what's so powerful about this process and what, what we're doing. We're, we're, we're expressing, of course, our own personal feelings. We can't avoid that as hard as we might try. But uh, at the same time, there's a, a connectedness that you say and I know others have said it too, uh, that we're not in our own pain or grief. We're not separated from what's going on in the collective in this country. And soon as you say the history uh, of unfinished business uh, is certainly where we're needing to face ourselves. So thank you. Thank you for doing it and saying that that way. Yeah, that's about all I, I wanted to say about it. Okay, yeah. thank you, Burnell. Um, okay, this is Melita Cowie. Are you here, Melita? Melita is a friend who sent this to me at the on January 6th. She calls it, what, what is it she calls it? Um, off the rails. Yeah, un, off the rails and underbelly. Okay. Good one. It's a good one. Yeah. I mean, it really describes what she felt was happening to Trump. Right. <clears throat> okay. And then this by Mary Alice Cop. Is Mary Alice with us? Uh, no, Mary Alice is in recovery and doing well for those of you who are friends of Mary Alice's. Um, but she did this one also on January 6th. Um, all the people that were jumping ship that day, the next day, uh, with Trump, the big whale, like the um, Moby Dick. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's a good one. That's great. It's fascinating yeah. that th this week I've been reading um, <laughs> Edward Edinger's uh, An American Nakia, Moby Dick, Melville's Moby Dick. Is oh, really? Moby Dick. Isn't that beautiful? Nakia. That's a yeah. beautiful piece. I, yeah. yeah, fantastic. I think it's really interesting. Yes, it certainly describes the day. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I, I really urge everyone to read Dr. Edinger's book, Melville's Moby Dick and American Nakia. Very interesting. Okay, uh, next is Saad. Is Saad there still? Saad. Yeah, yeah, I'm go here. On. Okay, uh, go for it. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for inviting me to be part of this. And uh, I'm not really sure if it's really appropriate for me to, to show my drawings and participate because, you know, I, my participation in a way is asynchronous with your, um, the trajectory of all of you. And to be honest, I didn't really know uh, what, what the meeting was about. But when I read uh, the announcement, I felt that I had a couple of uh, work that I did during this period, and uh, I felt uh, like sharing them. Um, 
So I'm, I'm a, uh, I do some prints, printmaking, and uh, uh, these are woodcuts that are part of a series of woodcuts, of nine woodcuts on the Beatitudes. And uh, they are, their size is uh, 15 by 11 inches. And uh, I did them probably, you know, five or six months ago during uh, the, the crisis, the pandemic. But it was not only the pandemic crisis, it was also all the political crisis uh, with everything that was going on, uh, you know, the isolation, the death, uh, the despair that so many people felt, the inequality, the racial violence. And um, I, I was feeling kind of like very tormented, uh, unhappy, and at the same time, very isolated. And I needed uh, some connectedness. I needed to anchor with something that uh, will take me to, to hope. And that's why I responded to, to the announcement. And I decided to, to, to pick the Beatitudes. Why? For many reasons. Number one, I uh, felt that uh, I needed a connection to the spiritual. And for me, they were really spiritual. But also, more importantly, uh, I think I felt I needed a to connect to others who will share common values, basic values, because I realized that our basic ethical and moral values were disappearing more and more in what we were living. And the Beatitudes were very appropriate for me. And uh, I decided to do them in Arabic. So if you look uh, at them, uh, each of them represent one of the Beatitudes, and this is the Beatitude number one. And uh, all the woodcuts are similar in design, but different at the same time. They all have like a center where the Beatitude the, is written, but also throughout the pages, you have, uh, you know, the words of the Beatitudes kind of like floating, growing, uh, and sometimes getting out of the page, uh, as well as the design, which is black and white and kind of like getting out of the out of the page to connect. Um, why Arabic? You know, I'm from Lebanon, and I really felt that during that moment, I needed to be more in connection with my own roots, and it was very natural that I do it this way. Uh, this one is the first the Beatitude, which, which says, uh, blessed to the poor of heart, uh, because I will inherit uh, the kingdom of God. Would you, would, you mind, one, uh, would you mind reading it to us in Arabic? Sure. <laughs> so, and if you, if you think in the center, and it's only kind of like the title of the Beatitude, which is repeated, again, and then all around it, like in the circle that is really covetating, is the repetition of of that several times. And when I did it uh, kind of like to connect with the spiritual, I really wanted like an, incant an incantation. So for me, uh, repeating it and seeing them growing yes. in the page was like, it gave an incantation uh, yeah. value to the, to the drawing. Yeah, like a mantra. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. I mean, the second one will be different. Uh, can we look at the second one? Now, this is the second Beatitudes, and the second Beatitude is, uh, uh, you know, uh, blessed are those who mourn because they'll be consoled and comforted. And uh, this is center, you know, the title is in the circle, and uh, the words go also all around uh, um, the print, floating, uh, going around it. And, and the design, again, the black and white, uh, the positive, negative, uh, uh, going outside and inside uh, the drawing. Um, probably you, you'll see what I said, that their design is very similar, but at the same time, each of them has its own, uh, uh, its own characteristics. And there are nine of them, each for each of the nine Beatitudes. Uh -huh. Beautiful. Would you with this? Would you read this too in Arabic? It's so nice to hear. Sure, it's Tuba al Hizana. Tuba is blessed are. The Hizana are the uh, those who are mourning. Uh, because they will be comforted one day because I will be consoled. Uh, 
and and you can really see this is the repetition uh, all all over uh, the design. Yeah. Uh, mm. Very nice. Thank you. Very nice. Yeah, quite striking. Right. So we started this with um, uh, Skip's uh, rainbows and unicorns teaser. Uh, so now you're going to see what I I really think. Ah. <laughs> uh. Yeah, wonderful. So this is after the breach, <laughs> and um, this is a mandala which shows in the lower right um, my ego, in the upper right my persona, uh, in the upper left the collective unconscious, and in the lower left um, my shadow, I guess, um, yeah. and maybe the right. shadow in general. Right. And the the shadow obviously burst its its um, boundaries here in the mandala. But uh, ah. the the universe is green, and um, in the upper left here, uh, this is a reference to the three main television channels. Uh, so uh, we have the. Um, uh, Fox News with Trump's yellow hair, and here we have um, CNN with more um, purple people, and this is uh, MSNBC with the uh, um, with the blue, and here in the persona, uh, what I'm presenting to the world and is right referenced by the shirt that I'm wearing tonight is that I recognize that we have to become more purple. We can't keep constantly tugging to the left and the right. And uh, so that's what I try to do wherever I can. And of course, I run into uh, some uh, GOP people here. The pinks uh, represent women who are um, who are uh, trying to hold the society together. Um, and the yellow represents youth, and uh, the green obviously represents those that stand for the earth. And in my ego, uh, you may remember from the fall that in, in this area before the election, uh, I never had any doubt that the president would lose the election. And um, at this point, I have no doubt that the country will survive and that we will come together as a country again. And so purple is my fashion statement, and it was picked up by the First Lady and by Hillary Clinton at the inaugural, so <laughs> in their dresses. Okay, so, so that's the breach. Wow. Okay. okay. And then here's uh, our steadfast guardians. So this is reading uh, left to right uh, with uh, the Trump world in orange and youth in yellow again. Um, the blue is uh, Democrats and uh, the brown obviously is people of color and um, the pink is women. Uh, so there's pink here fighting back, you know, in the, in the Trumpian era. And then uh, there's a steadfast wall that is here, our uh, military defending our nation and defending their oath to defend the constitution. And so the dark green represents the military uh, the purple, dark purple represents Americans who understand, I beg your pardon, um, represents Americans who um, have embraced the idea that we need to heal. Um, and the pink, uh, again, is women. Um, 
and there is a little so th this is the pink color in my set so it's like salmon color but the, this is women uh, the yellow represents youth again the green represents people that are interested in green and uh, so we have a lot of steadfast guardians and to me um, you know, it's always the women that rebuild a civilization after it's been destroyed by the men. And so here you see, um, you know, those of us who stand for uh, a, a united country and the women that, that hold back the tide. So more power to women. Okay, so wow. next... Beautiful. I can thank you. Thank you, Skip. I just want to say something about your guardians. Um, this whole piece along the right side of your painting is uh, such a, a mix of the masculine and the feminine and how it has to happen together. And I really appreciate your recognition of the involvement of the feminine in this process. Absolutely. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so Tim, you're up. Okay, Hello, this, is, um, this is really uh, taken from this wonderful Jung quote that Skip pointed out um, that I will read to you. I, I've actually set it up here. So if you uh, let me show it to you, if you're going to read it there, I'll, there it I'll is. just read part of it. Um, Mil um, Millions of years and untold millions of ancestors have worked up to this moment, and you are the fulfillment of this eternal moment. Once you take each moment as the eternal moment, as if nothing were ever going to change, not anticipating a faraway future, for the future always grows out of that which is. You must live life in such a spirit that you make in every moment the best of possibilities. And uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm calling it our moment because I have really been kind of obsessed with this idea that with all of the turmoil, you know, that all of the mud has been stirred up in civilization. And now we have this great opportunity to come up with new solutions to old problems, which oftentimes are not available when, when things are just going, going as normal. It takes really shaking up the mud in order to, to get the creative spirit moving. So I'm thinking about the image is really a picture of me standing on the backs of my parents, both of whom are dead. And of course their parents are also dead. All of those, this is the whole pile of my ancestors back into the very dim reaches of millions of years ago you know, when we weren't even human beings. And each of us is like this. We are standing on the backs of our parents who have devoted their lives to, to creating a world that opens up for our opportunity. And so this is our moment to, uh, to take evolution into our own hands. So in terms of the insurrection, I found that I was really thinking about the founders of this nation who pursued this grand idea that has turned into a transformational, transformational uh, civilization called democracy. And I keep thinking, how did a bunch of pioneers escaping from basic feudalism, scraping the living out of the wilderness, come up with such a grand idea? You know, and furthermore, they carried it into reality. And we are the inheritors of this great nation. And sometimes I imagine them looking down on us with perplexity, if not horror, that our imaginations are so tiny. Our dreams are so pathetic, almost like we're just looking down at our feet and, and we haven't raised our heads to look at the possibilities before us. It seems like humans have this inbuilt compunction to transform into a new kind of creature. We are the marvelous results of so many 
transformations throughout history, inventing language and taming nature, harness, harnessing energy, um, cooperating, even, even to the extent of leaving the planet. But how many of us feel that this transformation now is the goal of our lives? We have this great technological ex explosion, having solved a lot of the most threatening um, problems that our ancestors faced about just how to feed themselves and how to stay alive. And um, we have the opportunity to launch into something that is fabulous because all of these basic problems have been taken care of. And so this is our moment. It seems to me that we, um, we can come up with these marvelous new ideas that are nothing like what has been before. And so I'm, I'm just filled with, uh, with hope and, uh, and I kind of mourn the, the lack of imagination in our country. I mean, if you look at the school system, it's really, really sad that we spend so much energy on mathematics and science and not so much on, on art and music. Mm. Um, but, uh, but my feeling is one of hope. And, and I actually, I think every single one of us are in this position that we are, you know, we are supported by, the, by our own tree of ancestors. And all of us have the same capacity to come up with new creative ideas to try to fix the problems and move forward into a, a bright future. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Tim. Uh, and uh, I, I have a special surprise for you at the end, but not for now. Uh, <laughs> for Tim? This is for Tim? Well, it's for everyone. It's uh -huh. for everyone. Uh, but it, it's after the formal program. So, um, so the next one is... I just want to comment. Well, I... Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's go back to Tim. And I just wanted back. to comment on your your statement, Tim, because I, I often think, you know, how I'm wondering, well, you know, would my ancestors, be, what they did in order to create a life here, you know, would it be okay with them that I'm doing what I'm doing? You know, that's, uh, there really is a connection here. Uh, when I think of what they did it for, uh, and really? then what I've done it for, you know, so we're very connected, I think, to that story, whether we know it or not. So thank you for bringing it to our attention. <laughs> sure. And what you just said reminds me of, of the um, John Quincy Adams quote, I am a warrior so that my son can be a merchant so that his son can be a poet. Ah, beautiful. Yeah. And you, you are doing what they would, what, what they would have hoped for you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's a great quote. Yeah. Yeah, it is. That that was the man who was ambassador to Catherine the Great when he was fourteen years old. <laughs> I don't know if you know that story, but anyway. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, he he was John Adams was a minister plenipotentiary to Paris, and uh, he had to send a. a representative to Catherine the Great uh, during the Revolutionary War. And so he sent his 14-year-old son to represent the United States. And that was John Quincy Adams. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. OK, so Colleen, you're up. Ah, well, this, this was this morning. Um, and is a sense of the new feminine. I'm not quite sure what the new feminine is going to really look like, but I feel this rising coming up and uh, they're the hands of the brown women, the black women and the white women. And they're coming up out of the rhizome, um, out of the depths, out of the earth. And they're bringing some beauty with them, but most of all, they're bringing the apples of knowledge from the tree of knowledge of good and evil and it's just 
that information is just so important. The information that comes from the apple. This goes all the way back to biting into that apple. And now that's happened, I do believe. And so um, I thought, what will a mandala look like about this? Again, I can't close the top of the mandala. Um, I'm finding that's kind of consistent in my mandala. mandala. Um, so when that happens, you'll know that some, some big evolution has gone on inside of me. Uh, but out of our dreams over there on the right is the earth. Our dreams for the earth is what the uh, feminine will bring. And then our dreams for peace, the dove of peace, is what the feminine will bring. So this this was a real pleasure to do. And knowledge, yeah. too. Definitely. Definitely. The whole mandala is knowledge. All those little pieces of knowledge that have mandalas within them are like little signs of wisdom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, again, seeing a lot of parallels like the the orb and the eye yeah. and you know the bird which has has appeared in a lot of our drawings tonight mm -hmm. um that that sense of the fruit that um that i think of in terms of just vibrant color the feminine in fact there's a there's a bunch of themes that that i'm seeing that have have been repeated over and over like um, in, in my drawing called Our Moment, it kind of reflects the work that Jerome and Sherry did on great moments. Um, and there's, uh, there are these themes that, that to me are, uh, are strung like beads through the different artworks that we presented. Mm -hmm. in terms of the new feminine, the um, new knowledge, the golden child, um, energy. Uh, I wrote down a couple of really uh, of words that stuck out to me like blessed. Um, solutions, go together. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Cohabit in harmony. New knowledge, rescue of the earth. Um, Wonderful. Yeah, yeah it, it just feels to me like, man, this is a lot of good positive energy here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And as positive as it, uh, as much of it has been, I think almost every one, the darkness was there, which I, I think is a good thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Had to keep the darkness in, in the rhizome here. Also, yeah. there's a. Uh, it was a little daring of me to put the apple in the center of the mandala, uh, and I think that has something to do with the new feminine. Um, that usually the center of the mandala is some beautiful thing that's come out of the patriarchy, or the church, or religions, and to put the apple there was a little nervy for me. Uh, and then it was also uh, to leave so much space. Usually, I feel the space, but to leave so much space because there's just so much yet to happen now. But again, that space reminds me of all of the light that has been coming through a lot of the drawings we've seen. Yeah, yes. You know, yes. Jerome's yes. stars and um, in several of the works, there's a color uh, pattern, but then there's light coming through the back. And there's yeah. the woman, um, kind of backed up against the darkness, looking at the light. Um, mm -hmm. I just think there's a lot of parallels here. Yes, yeah. Colleen, if I may, uh, I appreciate the unnervy, yeah, bold nervy. apple, but the apple, that new knowledge is at the confluence of all the quadrants. Mm -hmm. and, and we must bite from that is what I see, which is so important. Oh, that's a good point. Thank you. Thank you. It is. Colleen, Colleen, I also see the apple right smack in the center of the heart. So mm -hmm. it's like um, the fruit of the soul. And again, um, uh, I agree with Tim. I see a lot of um, symbols, uh, like especially the eye. And um, 
Jerome, your um, picture of your eye, your first drawing, uh, reminds me of um, the Egyptian sim symbol and archetype of the eye, eye of Horus. And Horus was the um, love child of Iris and Osiris, so the male and the female. And what um, in Egyptian culture, it means the eye of Horus is of prosperity and uh, protection. So um, in the picture that um, also, who was it? Um, Hope of Dreams by, yeah, Jordan, you have an eye of Horus right in the um, picture of um, your yes, Hope of yeah. Dreams. I mean, it looks like the exact, if you look back, um, and Google um, Eye of Horus, you'll see. No, and that was intentional. Oh, and really? it was, was actually really intentional? Okay. Yeah, that, that after my hand got to a point to, I started to see kind of the rock method. I start to see what my lines are appearing. It was right in the skull. And I, I just saw this curve, which was so cranial. And I just went right into Eye of Horus and yeah. intentionally put that sagittal section in. Yeah, so Colleen, you have the eye too. And interesting that um, Jumping Ship, uh, Mary S. Alice Cobb has um, the spear <laughs> in the eye of the whale. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, <laughs> so, um, you know, I, an eye for an eye, yeah. remember that thing? An mm -hmm. eye for an eye, but then an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. Right. So um, just very prophetic. So, you know, thank you for this image. And then all the fruits that you have, the apples, you know, yeah, apple of wisdom, um, but it's being fruitful, prosperity, like um, I of Horus, about protection and prosperity. So there, you know, there's lots of, lot of, lots of things to hope for for the future. So 2021 is perhaps the um, uh, new emerging, um, <laughs> uh, Whatever is, you know, it, it's, it looks very good. It, it looks very good for mankind. Hmm. Let's hope. Yeah. Okay. Oh. So yes. there's another one here. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. This was yesterday. This is tiny fingers, sleepy eyes, and tiny fingers, tiny toes. <laughs> sleepy <laughs> eyes. Um, so I had to play on that word, tiny. Uh, for Trump down here in the Florida basin in the in the rhizome, rhizome and I'm I'm very concerned as I can hear all of you are uh, about what the shadow is up to right now because there's such a quiet it's like the shadow's gone into quiet and um, there is all this bright sun coming forth excitement exuberance um, and there was the first first showing of the Dove of Peace, and it has a lot of ideas that are being manifested and a lot of growth that's happening on the mandala. And then over on the left, there's a lot of ideas that haven't yet been manifested. So there's a lot happening above the surface, but there's also a lot happening below the surface um, with uh, Trump's orange um, hairdo over there in the deep left. So... Um, there's some things to be careful of. Um, right. Okay, so now there's a bit of poetry, and this was uh, Robert yeah. Sward's poem from um, which he uh, gave me this version of it just before we began, Colleen. So oh. um, I think Oh, you... okay. Well, I'll read this then, as I have the one that we did last time. Then let me read this. Who? What? Uh, where went I or Norman J. Norman? I would help, you know, that if I could, but I can't. Can you remember his name? Maybe it was Norman or something like that. I know it started with an M. Hmm, M, N? No. He's not out of office, but appears he is wrapping up four years of living in a place that early on, the White House, he called a dump. And momentarily, I forget his name. It's gone. Darling, what was his name? Of course, I would help. But I can't remember. I can't remember either. Norman, Norman J., Norman. 
our 40 something something, the river of forgottenness over and over and over and out, needing still, needing to pack his bags. What, what, what was his name? I can't remember. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Glimmer of that by the grace of God we may forget over and over and over and out. Well, I like it, Robert. <laughs> and so we thought we would try combining our talents. And um, so I'm giving a stab at poetry and responding to Robert's poem. Um, January 20th, 2021, inauguration. I remember now. We stuffed the big white thing into a washing machine. GE, Westinghouse, Air Force One, I think. So, <laughs> so white, the whitest white you ever saw, some say. It was like a big white quilt. Did you say guilt? It got bigger and bigger, the biggest thing you ever saw, some say. When we opened the prettiest bubbles you ever saw, little orange rainbows came oozing, oozing out everywhere nose, baggage, tail, they oozed and oozed. The guilt was gone, the quilt was gone. Did you say the guilt was gone? We ran to catch the bubbles, but they were wet and slippery, slimy even. We couldn't get it off our hands. We were falling, oozed everywhere. The biggest falling ever, some say. <laughs> so, we got ooze on our hands. <laughs> yeah, boy, it's like yeah. uh, the the tar baby. Once you once you get in with the tar baby, you can't get it, the tar off. That's right. Yeah. Okay, so I do have one surprise for after, but I have a few sl more slides to go through. Four more, to be precise. And okay. so this one is uh, at the end of the session to have Colleen once again tell us about the open studio so that as a reminder. And this will be at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern time, 4 p.m. Pacific time on these four dates. Yes. And this will be uh, exploring ourselves using Jungian terms, uh, but looking at what is the creative drive? What is the creative process that goes on within the creative drive? And then in the uh, collective unconscious, we'll take it apart inside of ourselves, looking at our masculine and our feminine. And for the men, the anima. And for the women, the animus. And we'll all look at the shadow and use art as a way of gaining knowledge about that. Oh, and one thing about that, uh, the, the sessions are free, but each person should have a um, newsprint pad, an 18 by 24 pad of newsprint and a box of oil pastels or crepas as they're sometimes called. Crepas, okay. Yeah, I'll show you a picture of them actually. A moment. Okay. Here's a, here's a newsprint pad. I think they run about five dollars. They're not they're not expensive. Just uh, um, hold on to that a minute, Colleen. Let me show the credits here, and then I'll get the share off the screen so we can see it. Okay. Uh, okay. So these are the participants for tonight's session, uh, in order of presentation, and. Uh, these are the producers of the evening. And so that is that. Okay, now show us. Okay. So um, a newsprint pad, are you seeing it? Because I'm Yes, not... yes, oh, we're good. seeing it. Good. And um, then a um, box of curry pods. You can find boxes. For some reason, I'm not on this screen, but um, you can find boxes like this. Some, some of them might be uh, just 16 or 20 colors, and that will be enough. But if you're ambitious, um, you might want to get a big one of 36 like this one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but they're oil pastels, and I like them because they're so 
uh, they're very, the color is very uh, dense, as you can see. Right. And it mixes with other colors beautifully, and you can even rub it around. Terrific. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, the thing that I wanted to share with everyone, um, we're, we're officially finished. Uh, and uh, so you don't have to stay for this if you don't wish to, but um, I think many of us were, what is going on here? Just a moment. Uh, okay. Um, I think many of us were impressed by um, the, the Youth Poet Laureate, Amanda Gorman. And I've been, um, I've been listening to a lot of her work in the last week, and I find it extremely moving. Um, and um, there's one piece that she did. Uh, it's called uh, uh, The Believer's Hymn for the Republic. And it's a very short um, poem, uh, which she performed uh, for the Boston Pops, before the Boston Pops about 18 months ago. And so what I'd like to do is uh, play the YouTube uh, of that. I'm gonna share my screen, which will uh, share the YouTube. Um, and I'm gonna have to take my headset off so that, so that uh, the, the sound is gonna come through my speaker and then back through out through my mic. So I hope this works, but um, here it comes. Um, but I, I think she really, 18 months ago when she was 20, uh, really summed up what a lot of us have been feeling and, uh, and thinking about. So pull the plug here. Well, yeah. I don't have that sound right. Just a moment. Just a minute, I have to get the sound correct. Just a minute, I have to get the sound correct. Okay, I'm sorry, that was a bust. You could just um, put it in the chat, put the link in the chat and we can all see it um, on our... Anyway, let me um, stop that share. Oh, we can give you the link instead so yeah. that you can go listen to it yourself. Yeah. I love the title though too, Believer's Hymn for the Republic instead of the Battle Hymn of the Republic. What an evolution. Yeah. Just, just, just a minute. Did anyone notice also what the four gold symbols? There was a triangular star on one on Amanda Gorman's right in her okay. hair. That's just like at the, at the inauguration. Yeah, at the inauguration, and then then she had the the hair holder which was like a red crescent moon. I mean, there was a very high priestess empress from the tarot deck. I mean, it was so, it kind of played down a little bit, but yeah. regal. I mean, it's such, an, such an empress. It was beautiful. Oprah Winfrey uh, helped design her, uh, what she wore, including the Oh, earrings. really? Plus, she made the ring that Amanda was wearing, which was a caged bird. 
in honor of wow yeah well um i i apologize for the sound and the mess up i haven't learned how to play a youtube (laughs) video yet but um i i did get the uh, link so let me give that to you on the yes um, you know thank you for alerting us and i i guess tomorrow she's going to be performing yeah i mean she's become very very famous and uh, well known yeah is it super bowl um, tomorrow i don't know oh yeah she's performing the super bowl but it's that's february 7th february 7th thank you right uh, which is the same day as the um uh, as our Ferrer thing but fortunately the super bowl doesn't start till 6 30 so you can do both okay (laughs) (laughs) but um the reason that uh, that particular performance moved me so much is that she um, covers in it some many many of the themes that we've been talking about tonight, and um, and also she talks about enactment, which is uh, one of the key features of um, Jorge Ferrer's approach to uh, the participatio mystique and and um, to the mystery okay so anyway um so we'll be doing that next uh, sunday um at 1 p.m and dr ferrer will be joining us from ibiza spain and uh at 1 p.m eastern time so uh it's an early wake up for you folks and Hawaii, <laughs> California, uh, but uh, it will be, it should be a we good. We can do it. <laughs> Pardon? We can you, do it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you can. And, well, uh, you know, with Amanda Gorman too, if, does anyone know that up to, I think 18 months, two years ago, I think up to two, two and a half years ago, she still had problems with uh, grass glass. She yeah. couldn't make the R. And you want to talk about making diamonds out of misfortune because her voice is so quickly articulate. And yeah. but she found, and I don't know which political patriotic song it is that has it's like a tongue twister level of R's in a row. And she just started humming it until she started mumble singing it until she sang along with it. And she just she talk about enactment just to dive into her misfortune and turn it into a diamond. So she's she's she is not just a prodigy. To me, there's talent and ability, and she is developed by hard work, her talent into ability. I mean, it's it's just so impressive. Right. And um, there's another presentation of it, which she did for the uh, uh, National Acad- or the American Academy of Sciences. So I put that link on uh, the on the Zoom channel as well. And uh, that, that is particularly good because with the Boston props behind her, uh, she's a little hard to mm-hmm. understand. But uh, in this other version, she does a five minute, it's a 10 minute video, five minutes. She talks about the challenges of, of writing this piece and, and being able to perform it before the Boston pops, which is quite an amazing thing for a 20 year old young person of any uh, stripe and uh, even one that's never had any problems. And uh, so she she discusses that and then she recites it, but recites it without the Boston pop. So uh, it's worth listening to, I believe. And uh, I think it's of note too, she's around the average age of the founding fathers. Yeah, weren't, weren't they all in like their early to late twenties? I mean, thirty-five yeah. was like the old grandpa dude. Yeah, the, I mean, the Marquis de Lafayette was twenty-one, and right. he, was, he was the guy that brought France to the rescue. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. So they weren't mowing lawns, you know, through the summer to pay for school. I mean, they th- no. Let's just go start a new country. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty well, <laughs> and uh, I've put one, uh, one other link here for you, uh, so you might want to grab these before we, we log off. And that, that link is for her talk about uh, poems not being political. And she says, she says, 
every so often I get a phone call and it's all, always for, for, from a white man. And he, sa he says, I want to commission a poem from you, uh, but we don't want it to be too political. <laughs> and, and so, uh, so her answer to that is in this last link that I gave you. And uh, she's just, she's just an amazing uh, young yeah. person. And, uh, I, I, I would love to get her for the wisdom path, but I think we'll have to wait until she's about 30. <laughs> she's in high demand right now. But anyway. You know, I said we could have a conversation sometime with Saab about the projects that he's doing, uh, the political projects that he's doing with art, too. I'm not sure how we could work that in, whether it would be worked into one of the Wednesday morning classes or, but it's, it's something to think about. Well, the Beatitudes, I especially was impressed with his nucleus, the center was another eye in a way. Mm -hmm. And that yeah. thematically, I mean, so I think he, there was a seamless segue of how he okay. dovetailed into yeah. this. I mean, it was so applicable. Oh, I think and, it's and beautiful. Proof, proof of the pudding. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, well, we can certainly have him for a wisdom path uh, session. That's probably more appropriate. But um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'll have to have more of an introduction to him. He sort of came into my life about five minutes before this session yeah, began. Yeah, he just came into my life yesterday. Uh huh. Okay. So yeah. I'm amazed at how quickly he pulled it together. Yeah, he's. Uh, I believe he's actually a physician at one of the hospitals in Cincinnati. My goodness. And uh, this is a, another thing he does. William Carlos Williams, the simple country yeah. doctor, you know, <laughs> one of the best poets around. It's right. Yeah. So right. Any, any, any more comments, folks, before we call it a night here? Thank you, everybody. This was such, such a joy. Thank you, Tim, Colleen, and Skip. It was a good series. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you. Really, really good. Thank you so much for holding us all through this. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you, thank Tim you and Colleen. Colleen, for helping me with this. It's been remarkable, actually. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. So, and I like you. that this is a vessel, not a crucible. I mean, I, I, it's, this is so welcoming here. So, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Peace. Okay. We'll see you next time. All right. Thank yeah, you. We'll see you soon. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, Jordan. Tomorrow morning we're doing uh, imagination <laughs> yes. for evil. Oh, cool. Okay. Eight a.m. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>